Hey y'all, I'm just busy working and I thought, shoot, I should be taking you along. So I'm just using my phone. I don't even have my little handheld tripod or anything. It's just in my hand. So there's a lot going on today and I probably should bring you. So this is my tromboncino or rampicante, zucchina rampicante squash, whatever you want to call it. I'll put a picture in here so that you can see what it looks like full length because I've already cut them up. I had three and these five large freeze dryer trays are the necks of three squash. So we're going to put these babies in the freeze dryer my little insides are a little twisted here there we go not that that matters but I kind of like things even and straight so five large freeze dryer trays was three necks of the squash it wasn't even um, I'll show you in a minute what's left of them but anyway um, I put a little bit of that Goya um, oh what the heck is it called I'll put it here anyway that seasoning on it so that we can either eat them as chips or it's the same thing I would add if I was cooking so it won't mess up the flavor either so I can use them to cook with or to eat as chips and I've rehydrated some already that I just made one tray just to try them and they rehydrate beautifully to cook with so we've got a dual purpose zucchini here in the freeze dryer so I'm gonna have to put you down so that I can start this freeze dryer okay so basically it asked me to cool the inside for 15 minutes and then add the trays I've done that I've closed the um, vacuum uh, vent, whatever you want to call it, and valve, and I'm just going to hit continue, and now it is going to freeze it, and then when it freezes it, it will start freeze drying. And obviously I've done no cleanup, I just was slicing away and putting on trays. These are the bulb or the seed ends of those squash, and those squash were about three foot long. Um, the necks, you saw the size of the slices. The necks are skinny and no seeds. And then the bulb end has all the seeds. So I'm going to scrape this out and then throw it in my food processor and shred it all up, put it in the freezer, and use that just like I would shredded zucchini when I bake or when I make my sauces. I always add zucchini and other veggies to make my sauces taste better and go farther and be richer and thicker and fuller and I'll take you along for some of that. I did a video on that and I don't think I've posted it. Um, I need to go back through my footage and find that and get that posted but I will be doing more next week so um, you'll see that then as well. So let's go outside and see what the guys are doing. Okay, so I wasn't kidding when I was talking to you about how gross it is in my garage right now. This is the duck's pin, and this pin looks like this every single day. It gets washed and cleaned, and new bedding, and clean water two or three times a day, and that's the nasty mess we're dealing with. So I have started putting the ducks out in the kitchen garden. I mean, look at this nasty mess. Out in the kitchen garden, there they are. And it's all fenced in. And they hang out here until nighttime. Before dark, I bring them back in. I have the cage right by the back door because I just have to open the door and call them, and they come in and shoot right into their cage. So here is the kitchen garden. And at the end, on the other side of that chair, is where the, the fence row is. And then of course all along here. Bill is going to 
take that end out and extend the fence on towards the end of the, the yard and up to the corner of the house. So it'll go up to the corner of the house, the front corner, and then up against it so that it'll be a big L shape. He's going to put a, a gate here. And of course, I won't let the chickens in here in the summertime with the garden, but when I'm done with the garden, they can have at it. I'll open that gate and just leave it open for the winter and let them tear through my garden and fertilize my garden and turn it over, and it'll be really good for it. While I'm standing right here, this my nemesis, the uh, um, passion flower vine, which is everywhere, is certainly getting pretty. So I'm not complaining about it quite as much. And I'm wondering, guys, do you know, is it going to fruit or is it just ornamental? Some people are talking about there's fruiting and this is year two and I haven't seen any fruit. So I'm wondering what the deal is with that. So let's go out and see what the guys are doing. Let's go this way because I want to show you why they're doing it. Okay. Talk about a mess in the garage. A stinky mess. Here are the chicks. And they are more than ready to be out of this pen. There are 10 of them in this pen. They're doing all right, but man, they're growing by leaps and bounds. And they need a bigger space. So the coop is up and ready to go, except there, it wasn't totally level. And so, therefore, um, we couldn't put them in there because something could get under it. And I am very protective of any animal I have. If I can prevent it in any way, shape, or form, that's going to happen. And so, basically, I'll come out here and turn around. You can see the front of my house. I'm standing at almost the edge of my Okay, now I'm at the edge of my yard. So, as you can see, I have a very long, narrow lot. It's less than a fifth of an acre. And um, my house is a really long house because there's an apartment onto the other end of the garage that my kids live in right now. And uh, therefore, it takes up a lot of my yard. And as you can see, there's my whole front yard is shade. So, um, and this is shade all afternoon. So I really can't use much of this. And as you can see, the side yard is shaded. So that only leaves on the other side of the truck there. And that side and my kitchen garden, which is semi-shady too. But the south side is good. So this is what's going on today. My husband and my grandson out here. Oh, that looks awesome. They have... This, they built the coop a couple weeks ago, and um, now they are putting these, these um, landscape timbers underneath because it was all uneven and we were afraid predators were going to get under. And then he's taken this half-inch um, wire mesh and attached it to the bottom of these timbers and leveled everything off and gotten it to where nothing can crawl under there because of the wiring. So now I am assured that my chickens are going to be safe. We're changing, or he's changing. I'm talking about it and he's doing it. Changing the latches because these are not really secure. Um, a smart raccoon could come, could do that with no problem. And uh, so he's changing latches so that they are more secure. So... I'm excited, chickens are coming out in a little bit. All right, so here we are with the chickens in their new home. And they are happy, very, very happy. And there's my grandsons in their new home as well. Look at all these chickens. Are you a chicken too? So here is, well, I'm telling you what, nothing's getting in here because I can't get in here. 
Well, I'll show you that later because I can't get in here. Going back up here. Oh. And here's the coop from the inside. I am oh. thinking eventually that I am going to put up here, I'm going to put another roost. I think there's enough room in between them that they won't poop on each other. What's a roost? A roost are these, oh. these pieces of wood that they, they sleep on. I didn't like that off of it five. Yeah. So, they're happy, happy, happy little campers. It was so cute. We put them all on top at first. And the little guys, they'd never been actually on anything but wire. And they started giving themselves a dust bath. It was the cutest thing. I so anyway, everybody's happy. Including me. Including Lucas. Well, that's it for today, friends. Thanks for watching. I love you and appreciate you. God bless you until the next time. Mwah.